<laughs> All right, hey, it's Colin from Tilt. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about how an SCS actually works. There's a ton of videos out online, um, but I don't think any of them really talk about how an SCS clamp actually works, how important production quality is, um, and then how to pretty much dial in anything um, based on like the theory of how it works rather than like if it's doing this do this um, So we'll kind of dive in a little bit deeper and if you watch this to the end I think you'll probably have a way better understanding of how those things actually work. So first off some boring basics actually uh, the SCS clamp should slide right over a fork and likewise the clamp should slide right into the handlebars so if it doesn't do this the next step is to take care of that and handle that. Uh, when you put the SCS clamp on your fork with the deck and headset assembled, uh, you always want to make sure that the fork goes up to at least the middle of the second bolt of the clamp, but then also that there's room between the compression washer, the lip inside of the SCS, and the fork. And what the, the room, the little bit of space in there is going to allow it to do is when you tighten down your compression washer and bolt, there's room for it to actually compress properly. So in essence, you just want to make sure that the compression washer never touches your fork, and you can know that by looking through the slit of the actual clamp. So not every SCS and fork will slide right over each other. That's kind of like the reality of it. That's why a lot of people don't like to use it. And the biggest reason for that is uh, when you're producing this stuff and when you're behind the scenes handling the production and the quality of it, how do you think you measure this fork? Do you somehow measure around the fork, or do you just measure the across the what's called the diameter? So when you're in production, you measure the diameter because it's really easy. So you just take a caliper, damn, I wish I had one, and you just measure across the fork and you know if it's the right size. And likewise with handlebars. But what a lot of people don't realize is that we're dealing with full circles here. And it's two circles fitting over each other. So circumference, the distance around the circle is actually a big deal. So if you have something like this fork, which I had painted on the top last week, where you add a little bit of thickness. That thickness on the diameter doesn't measure very much, but the circumference, the distance around the fork, is three times the diameter. So automatically you have a clamp working on three times the error of standard production, and that's why it's so important uh, to keep things in check. So with Tilt, we only use three different finishes on our handlebars because the size of the actual the bottom of the handlebars where the clamp goes has a really tight tolerance for production, meaning that if we have too thick of paint, we have to reject the handlebars and refinish them, and that takes a lot of time and money. And on the forks, we only use anodizing and not any paint, no hydro dip, nothing with clear coat, because you want to make sure that the fork's the right size, and anodizing is the best finish to make that happen. So I had, last week I had painted uh, this fork and these handlebars that we had lying around the shop to show you guys that if paint's too thick, your clamp doesn't fit over it. So we're actually going to use the penny trick and set up this fork with these handlebars and uh, show you what happens. So I actually really suck at the penny trick. So I don't actually, I don't know if I've ever done it. So this is how the penny trick works. This is a compression washer trick, I guess, because I'm using a compression washer. But back in the day in scootering, people would put pennies, flip one of their bolts around, loosen up their other bolts, and then when you tighten this one, it actually spreads the clamp. So I think some things call it like a spreader bolt. I don't really know, but in essence, this way, as you tighten this, you're opening up the slit of the clamp. So let's see if that's enough. And now my SCS fits over this fork. So I'm going to clamp this on just like I would if it were going onto a scooter. So now that it's on the fork, I'm gonna take out this bolt. And now our handlebars should go in. So now our handlebars go in, but now they almost wiggle inside of there. You probably can't see that on camera, but since the fork is bigger, when, when we forced it into the clamp by using the penny trick, it made the entire clamp bigger around inside. It spread the slit. So now when I put the bars in, they're almost really loose. So I'm going to tighten this down, and I'm going to show you the problem with riding like this, because this is not a good system or setup to use when it goes together like this. So now as I'm tightening this, what's happening is, since the handlebars are smaller, like the normal correct size, and the fork was too big, the clamp tightens and pulls down a ton over the handlebars, but then it hardly pulls down over the fork. Right here, it's clamping a lot on the fork, but since the slit's expanding at the bottom, it's not really clamping on the fork down here, because you can see that it's visually bigger here than it is here. And that means the circle that we're clamping with is bigger as well, and it's not truly clamping the fork. And the worst part about this is the slit's a lot smaller up here, which means that the clamp is stretching down 
to try to hold on to the handlebars. So if you ride like this with a fork that's too big and handlebars that are the correct size are too small, you risk having your handlebars pull out because the clamp right here isn't contacting as well because the fork is too big. So this is a super dangerous way to do it. So you never want to put together your SCS clamp like this. I took apart the first setup that we had and I'm going to show you the second part using the bars that are too big with just paint. So that's the hardest thing for manufacturing handlebars for an SCS clamp that most uh, scooter companies probably don't care about as much as they should. And it's because normally when you paint a handlebar, you're going to have it vertically. And when you paint it, this is going to be the thickest spot of the paint. So uh, like I said, there's only three different finishes we use and we try our hardest to make sure it's the correct size. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that just the paint can cause problems. So we're gonna use the penny trick on the top bolts of the clamp this time and uh, force these bars in with the correct size fork that automatically slides in perfectly. I have the clamp spread using the penny or compression washer trick and I'm going to try to slide the bars in and they don't go yet, so I have to torque this a little bit more. There we go. All right, so this is the most common problem, is that people can't get their bars in and out, but the fork will go in and out more easily. So we have the bars in with the penny trick, and now the fork goes in, and the fork wobbles this time. Last time, when we had a fork that was too big, the bars wobbled, right? And the, uh, so now the bars are hard to get in, and the fork wobbles. So if we tighten this down like we would on a scooter, I'll show you why this is also a really horrible idea to ride it like this. You never want to have your scooter set up like this. All right, so last time the slit was bigger at the bottom because the fork was too big and smaller at the top. This time, just by looking at the slit, I can tell that it's bigger at the top because the handlebars are bigger and smaller at the bottom because this fork is the correct size. So what that means is that this top bolt or the, the middle bolt is spread a little bit for the handlebars to get in and so it's bigger at the top and at the top that means our circle of our clamp is bigger and that means that we're not clamping as well as we could be on the handlebars. At the bottom it's trying to be smaller because it's pinching down but that means this middle bolt which is a little bit bigger than the bottom bolt isn't clamping all the way down on the fork. So it's like a little confusing hopefully I'm explaining it well enough for people to understand but what this is going to do is this system is not clamping down on the fork as well as it could. And that's going to cause the compression to loosen because a little bit of wiggling on the deck, um, this is gonna loosen up because it's not clamping as well as it could. Now I'm gonna show you guys, if you have parts like this that don't go together perfectly, how do you get them together perfectly? It's not the prettiest thing, but it is the best, safest way to ride. I said after we put together both situation, we would figure out how to dial in any setup. So for the one with the, where the bars were too big, you can really see how the SCS kind of like really screwed, these, screwed this up, uh, like the paint and everything. And the way you actually do that is if this is too big, uh, we sand it down. So what I used to really like to do when I cared a lot about how my scooter looked was use tape to make sure I didn't sand too far up and then just some rough sandpaper to kind of take some paint off. So I am gonna go ahead and do that. So I always use tape so that it wouldn't scuff up the bars where they show because if you're sanding it down um, when it at, where the bar actually goes in the SCS, you'll never see it. But if you scuff it up too high, you'll see it. And then if you just bought new scooter parts, that could kind of suck. So you should never really have this problem with tilt stuff. Once in a while, just like anybody, we'll get a defect through. But this is all stuff that we planned for. You saw our bars already went into the SCS well. Our fork also went into the SCS well. So this you probably won't experience with tilt parts, but in case you have other bars that you do, this is how you fix it. All right, so we finished sanding again. It sh this clamp should go over now. We'll see. It's a lot better than it was, but it's still pretty tight. You're never gonna get it absolutely perfect if it's like this, because you're never gonna be able to sand perfectly up to where the, like, the SCS ends anyways. But this way, at least, we can get the bars in and get it set up and the slit should be straight. All right, so we have the handlebars with the sanded down paint, the right size fork and the SCS, and we can tell that the, or we can see that the slit is still straight, which means that these two bolts for the handlebar and these two bolts for the fork are all clamping evenly and that we're gonna have a really good strong hold. So hopefully you learned in this video how important it is for manufacturers like Tilt uh, to control even the thickness of the paint or the size of the handlebars, the size of the fork, and the size of the SCS so that you guys can have a good experience and just ride your scooters. 
Um, we try really hard at Tilt to make sure that everything is the right size. I don't, I think we do a really good job of making good clamps, good compression systems. Hope you had good experiences with it as well. And then hopefully you also learned in this video that you don't really want to use the penny trick. And if you do, you risk uh, having your handlebars pull out or having your compression loosen. All right, so we just realized we have no use for these handlebars, this fork, and this SCS after this video. So if you guys comment either something you learned from this video or something you want us to talk about in the future, share with you products, how something works, anything like that, uh, comment that. And then we'll choose somebody to win this Nimbus 124, this red sculpted SCSLT clamp, and these Scout bars with some beautifully worn out continental grips. So yeah, take care.